Concepts are so fun and easy to remember. I put mustard on them and I eat them. I really, really love remembering concepts. I love abstract ideas. I love abstract thinking. And I love committing complex ideas mm. to memory. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to make it fun and easy for you. I'm going to make it immediate and effective. And if you really, really nail this, you're never going to really think about abstraction again in quite the same way. And conceptual matters will be very, very concrete and easy for you to work with, manipulate, remember, and communicate so that you can do whatever it is that you feel called to do as the architect of your future. And that's what this program is all about, this channel. And I really, really am glad you're here. So if you're new here, get subscribed, hit that thumbs up if you're not. And we're going deep into the future together to train ourselves to remember the information that matters so that we can be the architects of our lives. So there's a couple of things here. And thank you to everybody who participated on the community tab and answered questions around conceptual thinking, the problems of remembering concepts. Number one thing that I noticed though, is that a lot of people are talking about systems. They're talking about processes. They're talking about things that are not conceptual. So one thing that we need to do is if we are trying to remember a concept, we need to actually be memorizing a concept. So what is a concept? A concept is an abstraction. It is literally what the word abstraction says. So ap means away from, a, b, and traction is to pull away from. So take the idea of human. Human is a concept and it is something that helps us have a concrete association of people who look like you and me, right? We have particular characteristics, both physically, behaviorally, and in terms of politics, economics, etc. right? But if you abstract from this, then you go to mammal, right? And then you pull back further, then you go to species, and then you can go back further, and you can go all the way back to, you know, microorganisms, and you could even think of stardust, right? And the nature of the universe, if you want to abstract far enough, because app is to move away from, and traction is to pull back, right? So an abstract idea or a, a concept is literally some level of moving away from the idea. So this is really, really helpful and important. If we're not memorizing concepts, then we can call a spade a spade and help ourselves by organizing the information for what it is. So if it's a system or if it's you know a set of precedents in law and so forth, maybe some concepts are involved, but it's very, very useful to know this and to be able to divide them out and treat them differently where they need to be treated differently. Now, in terms of just dealing with information, what I want to propose to you is that whether it's conceptual or not is really irrelevant. If you really have your memory system structured, you can memorize anything of any nature because information is so similar. It's packaged in what? Alphabet, numbers, symbols. What else? Maybe there's some images, but that's pretty rare that we need to do that when it's related to abstract concepts because a painting that might be an abstract painting is sort of visual. And if we want to describe how that it's abstract, well, then we're going to use words, right? And we're going to use associations. We're going to use analogies. We're going to use metaphors. So we're going to be working to make it more concrete through what? Through language. And language works in my brain the same way as it works in your brain. And we don't necessarily know all the mysteries of how that works, but we know that it does because we're able to communicate. And we're communicating through essentially endless rearrangements of the alphabet. So memory systems, the memory palace, magnetic imagery, recall rehearsal, they all rely on you accepting the sameness of information and then mastering systems that allow you to rapidly create associations. So in our survey there, we had people mention the economy. So economic concepts. And one major economic concept illustrates very easily how we can take a memory palace and we can take the actual concept itself and rapidly turn it into an association that helps us remember it, which would be the idea that there's an invisible hand that guides the market. From a mnemonistic perspective, someone using memory techniques is a mnemonist, I would just simply look at the words first and foremost, the alphabet, I-N-V, the invisible hand. I think H.G. Wells, the invisible man. And, you know, I might not have an image in my mind of the actor who played it in the original black and white movie, but I might think of Kevin Bacon from the Paul Verhoeven version, right? And now I can think in a memory palace, what is Kevin Bacon going to be doing with his invisible hand, right? 
And now let's say that there's some information about market forces like inflation. Well, now I can have him inflating a balloon and passing his invisible hand through it, all right here on this bookshelf, for example, or in the corner of a room. It doesn't really matter where, except for to the extent that you have strategized the locations of your memory palaces. So how do you do that? Well, don't always do it this way, but imagine you have your first memory palace network and your letter I memory palace, because you have one for each letter of the alphabet, is your friend Ian's place, right? And you think, okay, at Ian's place, I'm going to have this figure of Kevin Bacon passing his hand invisibly through the balloon that is being inflated. Maybe your friend Ian is inflating the balloon. And then you just go from there and you go to the next part of his home because you strategized it all out. And that's just one way of doubling down on associations by placing I information in an I memory palace. You don't have to do it that way, but it's good to be able to do it that way, especially when you just walk into a lecture hall or something comes up on the television that you want to remember. You go, oh, well, that's an I information. I'm going to stick it right in Ian's place. All right. And you might want to have multiple eyes as well. Of course, you can also say, well, I'm dealing with this economics textbook. It's filled with concepts like the invisible hand, and I'm going to need to have, you know, a memory palace network just for this. And you might have one for chapter one. You might have one for chapter two, for chapter three, etc. That's another way of approaching it. But your economics textbook, right? Well, it starts with E. So why wouldn't you then think about using Eric's house, you know, if you have a friend named Eric? Or maybe you have a, a favorite store that starts with E. Edeka, if you're in Germany or something like this, right? There's always going to be an option. So now, any abstract concept that you give me, I will be able to just look at what it's called or words that are in it, I will find a place for it in my Mary Palace network, and then I will find associations for it simply by using the strength of the alphabet. Now, if there are numbers involved, I would use something like the major system. So, you know, let's say you want to talk about a particular year that inflation changed uh, its nature. I don't know. <laughs> there was a new state of inflation, right? Well, then we're going to add the year. Let's call it 1979. We're instantly going to have Captain Crunch for 79. That's the image I use for 79 most of the time. I have several images for different numbers and so forth. But Captain Crunch, because 7 is a K in this system, and 9 is a B or P, bang, presto, goes into the Mary Palace. And it can go with Ian and the invisible hand, with Kevin Bacon and the balloon, without really confusing things. It's just that the Mary Palace is going to help create a little bit of a platform, a stage for these things to be laid out on. We could go through endless mnemonic examples, but I really want you to get the theory because the goal of all my memory training is to help you start using the techniques and create the examples yourself. You don't need to waste time looking for mnemonic examples. What is needed and what makes the difference for so many people is they get the memory palaces created, they get their magnetic imagery created, and then they start to practice and they just look at the alphabet, they find a place for the information, and then they encode it using associations. And it works so much better if you've done some practice just assigning associations in advance. And in previous videos, I've given you exercises on how to do this. The thing that I always tell people in the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass is that if you want to really nail this, get through the core training. Pretend that we're at a weekend seminar together and bolt down. This is how I take courses myself. Really go through it. There's exercises to be completed within two to five hours. You can have your memory palace network done, your first one. You can have all your associations written out, your first range of associations, and then you just start applying it to what you need to study, whether it's law, economics, psychology, whatever, you, if you name it, you can create associations for it. So there no longer needs to be abstract concepts that you struggle with. Instead, you always have a concrete response. This is one of the reasons why that Bruno used the word shadow in his memory training. So if you don't know Giordano Bruno, you can watch the replay where I talk about on the shadows of the ideas. And basically you're creating this sort of shadow world in your mind where every letter of the alphabet comes to life with this double. It's not like a shadow in the dark negative sense. It's a shadow in the sense of a double. A, Apple computer. B, Batman. C, Cookie Monster. D, Dracula, etc. Right? And you just go on and on and on. Dialetism is a kind of conceptual hard word that I memorized recently using Dracula. 
right? And it's just that simple. I just look at it and it's like, whoa, dialetheism, that's a hard word. No, no, and a thousand times no. It's Dracula's word, right? And if it comes to something like eudaimonia, well, Einstein can help with that, right? Very, very simple. When I was learning German, Fähigkeit. Well, F, that's a word I often use Foucault for, right? But F-A, I might think of something else, like the factory, right? Uh, just a place that I happen to know. There's many places called the factory, but this is the one that I use. And this is why you're going to do so much better when you develop your own systems and make your own examples so that you can look to any single word, any single string of words, any single concept and immediately make it not abstract, but concrete because you have created this alternative double version in your mind just by simply noticing the alphabet, sticking it in space. So a concept that you might want to really, really get familiar with comes from the very deepest origins of these techniques in the Greek world. The scientist and philosopher, he's often considered the first scientist and the first philosopher. Imagine what an honor that is. Thales, he said, Megaston topos, hapantagar kori, which means space is ultimate because it contains all things. And that might be a kind of like, whoa, that's a difficult concept, right? But it's really, really beautiful because where does information exist, right? It exists in space. It exists in the space of your mind. And that's the only thing that we can really confirm, right? We don't actually know for sure that the external world exists. We have every reason to believe that it does, but we can't know for sure. So space is ultimate because it contains all things, including the very idea that you exist, right? So now we're getting super conceptual. But if you want to remember these kinds of things, which incidentally, they get into ideas like hard versus soft solipsism, well, then, you know, you can, you can think, what could I use to help me remember those terms? They're very conceptual terms, right? Well, I, there's a store where I live nearby called Silly Sollies. So solipsism is there. It could be better call Saul. I can go on and on and on with lots and lots of examples. But the point is, is that that store exists in space and the alphabet exists in space on the wall, but it also exists in the space of my mind. And each and every one of you listening to this, understanding what I'm saying right now, you're understanding it because you were trained in the alphabet. It's a free resource and you can take that alphabet and you can weave it with space in the same way that a store can put the alphabet on its surface so that you know what that store is and you know where it is through the address. And that's exactly how you can organize information in your mind, no matter how abstract it is, no matter how difficult it is, if it can be said in words, you can memorize it. So get out there, make sure you complete these exercises, really two to five hours is all we're looking at. You will be anemonist and you know what? Some people can even do it faster. Maybe some people do it a little bit slower. That's okay too. What does it matter how long it takes when you have the rest of your life to be the architect of your future so long as you have the tools?